Hi, my name is Sandy Baird, and I am a citizen activist in Burlington. Um, and we're here today to talk to Kurt Maida, who is an attorney in town, and also a scholar and a commentator on what's going on in our nation sometimes, in our city a lot. So here we are to talk about the current state of our city and also our nation. And I guess we should begin, Kurt, if you don't mind, with what recently happened, I believe, in the House today, with the announcement that the House and the Republicans in the House have stopped aid going to Vladimir Zelensky. Is that what's happening or what, what's going on here? Yes. Which means what for the Ukraine war? Well, it puts Ukraine in a dire situation, I think. Uh, the... What happened? The, the government of Ukraine, the leadership in Ukraine, were expecting a flow of aid that uh, would allow them to continue fighting against Russia. Mm -hmm. And uh, it appears that that aid, depending on how you want to term it, uh, is essentially being held hostage uh, by leadership in the Republican Party that are placing conditions on this aid. They're not outright saying no to Mr. Zelensky, but they're saying that there's a domestic matter that's of greater importance than the Russia-Ukraine war, which is uh, security on the southern border of the United States. Uh, there's still a tremendous amount of migration taking place without uh, adequate uh, review and scrutiny mm -hmm. at the southern border, namely Mexico, of course, mm -hmm. that we're talking about here. Mm -hmm. uh, and there are thousands of individuals and families that are coming over the border. Uh, and the southern states that are border states are at a point where they are expressing that they're at crisis levels of migration coming through. And the Republican le leadership has clearly stated that they will not uh, continue to give billions of dollars of aid to other countries, and in this case we're talking about you know Ukraine, funding Ukraine, if no deal is worked out that will at least address border security. And that just happened today, is that correct? And although Zelensky is here in this country, but he might very well go home empty-handed. That's very possible. Zelensky's been here several times uh, and has been successful in the past. He's even addressed Congress, hasn't he? That is correct, uh -huh. yeah. Uh, he has been successful securing money and aid uh, and weapons uh, from the United States, different classes of weapons, some of which have been controversial. Uh, but he has gotten mostly what he's asked for, uh, mostly, not everything. Uh, but this time it looks like possibly he may not be successful Does if the Republicans stand strong on this uh, one issue of border security at the southern uh, states border. Okay, so without this aid, Zelensky is also saying, what, that Ukraine will lose this war, right? Yeah, I think a lot of military experts have uh, said it's already lost. Well, right? they judge that there was a there was a, a big to do made uh, starting this uh, early this summer mm -hmm. about a counteroffensive right. that Ukraine yeah. was going to uh, spearhead mm -hmm. against the Russian army, mm -hmm. and they it appeared in the beginning that there was a, a bit of a stalemate that they were able to achieve. Remember, F-16s also have now been added to the arsenal uh -huh. of the Ukrainian army. How about army. F-35s? I don't think F-35s yeah, have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, there's been talk, and yeah. then they, uh, much to, uh, much pressure was applied on the Germans to provide certain uh, types of tanks, which uh, the uh, the new chancellor of Germany knew for a year anyway. Uh, Schultz was against initially transferring that uh, weapons technology to Ukraine, but I, there was a significant amount of pressure that we, uh, as the Americans, we put on on the Germans, and they provided that new uh, class of tank. Mm -hmm. So it uh, diversified Ukraine's uh, arsenal. Mm -hmm. The, the counteroffensive, though, is running out of ammunition, right. literally and figuratively speaking. Right. And it's at a point right now between the attention of the world being focused on the Israeli-Gaza right. uh, uh, conflict and, uh, and the fact that border security is being uh, placed as a priority over foreign aid, military aid, 
it appears that Uc the Ukrainians are going to be in a difficult situation. It's going to be a tough winter. And uh, I think it's essentially what uh, President Putin of Russia has skillfully planned, I'm going to say. Planned? Uh, planned. Do you think he really planned that the U U.S. would stop aid to Ukraine? I don't think so. I think the, you know. Maybe took that into consideration. I, I think that, that was probably put into, taken into consideration Maybe. largely for one thing. If you look at several conflicts mm -hmm. in the past 40, 50 years that the United States has been involved in, uh, whether we look at the Taliban, we look at, um, you know, Syria. Syria, but Iraq, mm -hmm. but especially especially the uh, the Afghan uh, yep. war because mm -hmm. uh, because it started in 2003 and mm -hmm. we're 20 years. Aye, aye, uh, aye. I think Mr. Putin's calculation was that at some point, you know, this is going to be a war of attrition. The Russians are always going to be there physically because they're physically they're geographically located there. At some point, America is going to tire of the, number one, there's going to be fatigue in terms of the stories about Ukraine. There was a lot of excitement in the beginning and a lot of empathy and sympathy for the Ukrainian people in the United States. But at some point that the United States is going to tire because it's not on our shores. Mm -hmm. And similar to Afghanistan, after about, you know, 18, 19 years, you know, we basically gave it back to the Taliban and said, you can have it. That's true. Yeah, That's you know, true. again, much to the chagrin of you know many humanitarian groups, uh, women in that country, as well as different minorities. Uh, but I think Mr. Putin has a similar calculation in that he thinks he that at some point that the West is going to get tired of continuously providing this aid. And there have been also a lot of allegations about corruption in Ukraine before I, the yeah. before the mm -hmm. conflict. Mm -hmm. uh, with respect to Europe, uh, Ukraine was considered one of the more one of the countries that had extremely alarming levels of corruption. I think that's still the case. In the society, it, yeah, that's still well, the case. you have a situation then where you know billions of dollars all of a sudden are coming in, in a country that uh, their biggest source of income prior to the uh, prior to the conflict was a gas pipe mm -hmm. that that went from Russia to Western Europe. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think they earned about four billion dollars in leasing fees for this pipeline, uh, and now you have billions of dollars of aid coming from different sources, the biggest of which is the United States. That, le that you know, in, a, in an environment where there's a high amount of corruption, that can have you know some very interesting results, and uh, I think that is a concern also with respect to this flow of aid that's gone there. Republicans in the House have brought up this issue, mm -hmm. you know. So I think, in part, because of the conflict in Gaza and Israel, and in part, the southern border, and in part, the uh, the issue of of, uh, of corruption in Ukraine, there are questions being asked now that weren't asked before. Right, but there's also something else that I've always suspected, is that. The both parties want this war in the Ukraine. Both parties want the war. No, I'm sorry, by parties you mean? I mean both the Democrats and oh, the Republicans okay. have a similar foreign policy. There yeah. are many people who argue that there is one party which is called the war party. Yeah. There is not much, those are the political parties and in right. fact I believe that's the establishment of the two political parties, not the people on the ground. I've always suspected that the people like you and me, normal people, if you had a vote on whether to send all this money to Zelensky, or even if you had a vote on the current war between Israel and the Palestinians, I don't think many Americans are interested in, what, yeah, in putting, sorry, in putting no. our national treasure into these endless wars. And I believe that from the bottom of my heart. The Americans are real sick of the war in Ukraine. Yeah. Real, and they never were that much into it. Certain certain constituencies were. Yeah, well, the the uh, support for the war has dwindled. I yeah. think again, you know, if when, it ever was really well, there in the first place. When the invasion place, first took place, uh, there was no in, vote. Mar in March of yeah. no, there was no vote. But mm -hmm. in March of at least uh, March of I believe at what, this 21? point twenty one, twenty two. I can't remember. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I think it was 22. Mm -hmm. 
uh, I think there was a lot of, you know, I mean, fanfare may not be the right word, but, you know, there was a lot of interest, at least, uh, on the part of the American pu public mm -hmm. with respect to the invasion. I think the, uh, there was a lot of talk at the time that, you know, it's the old Hitler argument that's, yes, always, that, that's, that's always, always made. That's, that's always the argument. Whether it applied to Saddam yeah, right. Hussein or, you know, anyone else. Or, or, or Serbian, Milosevic, right, every, all it, of them if, were labeled If we don't Hitler. stop them, they're yeah, going right. to take all of Europe or they're yeah. going to take all the middle, right, exactly. over all the Middle right. East. So, you know, we can't be placed in a Neville Chamberlain uh, position. position. Right. So, you know, that always gets people riled up. But I think as time has gone on and, uh, you know, they were, and, I, and I'm quoting this from a television show, so don't anyone write and say that I stole something. But uh, what was sold as World War III initially, uh, or the start of World War III, has, with the way the fighting has ha taken place, it's been more like World War I, in that mm -hmm. we're talking about trench warfare, no well, clear uh, progress. Still Stalemate. No clear yeah, right. progress on either side. Right. And in a society that we live in and much of the world lives in now in terms of wanting quick results and something packaged and, and given to the public as a victory or a loss, uh, that's, not really, that, that's not really interesting, a, a, a war that's at a stalemate for a couple of years. Mm -hmm. And I think there is a certain level of fatigue uh, with respect to news from the Ukraine. Absolutely, but I know. I mean, and then the money right, that right, goes right. along but with you, it, also. I always thought, I guess the way that Tucker Carlson put out always was they asked, a, we asked a different question, and he did too. Maybe that's why he was fired. He would ask the question, is this war in the interest of our country, the United States of America? I think most people, if they were asked that question, I think we'd be in a lot fewer wars. Um, sure. And if, if we're really looking out for our own country, our right. own citizens. But I think what happens is, you know, we always fall into, you know, the other side. Yeah. That's, when I say side, I'm not re blaming Republicans or Democrats. No, right. I'm, I'm referring to the pro-war Yes, right, caucus. the pro-war, right. Uh, you know, they're always able to effectively make this argument, like I call the, the Hitler argument, mm -hmm. that if we don't stop yes, that, right, if we don't stop it. Noriega, he's going to take over the world. Yeah, I know. If we don't uh, stop, you know, Fidel Saddam, Castro. Castro, you know, even, you know, countries, you know, in Central America, you know, they're right. going to somehow become the next Nazi Germany. Or Soviet Union. Yeah, well, that's a bigger power. Yeah, but, right. I mean, some of these other countries right. that, you know, w when... You know, we compared Noriega to Adolf Hitler. You know, no. I mean, let, let's get even, real here. Or even Saddam Hussein. Yeah, well, right. Well, Saddam had a little more firepower, yes. but not as much as we or were Qaddafi saying was that another he was. One. Right. right, Qaddafi was right. another one. So it's often a, a, a pretty, uh, you get a, a certain base riled up mm -hmm. and say that, okay, well, you know, we don't want to be looked at as Neville Chamberlain. Maybe we do need to take it out, take the war over there before it comes here. And that's been a very successful argument for the pro-war you know, industry in this country as yeah. well as politicians. Right, but yeah. I, I, okay. But that being said, look, our, our country, you know. It's uh, nearly bankrupt. We have a lot of problems here. If yes. anyone lives in any, you know, anything resembling an urban environment, uh, we see that, you know, we have lots of problems and when, and. Including Burlington, which including is. Including our other. lovely town of Burlington, yeah, right. yeah. Which we were gonna talk about also. Sure, I mean, but when you put out numbers like 100 billion and 50 billion and 40 billion, you know, these are numbers that can take care of a lot of social issues and injustices in our own country, right, right. on our own shores. And, you know, we write these checks and we hear these numbers as if they're nothing and they're going overseas. And I think after a while there's a certain level of fatigue, you know, on the part of the American public uh, when they see, when they go outside, you know, and they see that there's a homeless problem, there's a drug problem, there are people, Americans that are not being taken care of. And then we're writing these, essentially these blank checks, mm -hmm. you know, with, uh, 12 digits in some cases, right? you exactly. know, uh, if I have that right, w without a whole lot of accountability. None. And then the no, results I'm... are lousy. Too. Lousy, yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, it seems like the war is over in a lot of ways. The Russians have occupied that territory of Ukraine. They're even going to hold elections, I've heard, in the Russian-speaking areas that they have apparently taken over, yeah. the Donbass. Um, they've already succeeded in taking the Crimea. Yeah. So I probably think 
they won, right? If, if Mr. Zelensky goes back to Kiev without a aid deal from the He's United States. He's going to, apparently. Yeah, but if that does indeed happen, mm -hmm. you know, and at the last minute there isn't some kind of uh, arrangement mm -hmm. that is arrived at, I think, uh, I think they're going to, I think the Ukrainians are going to have to start recalculating yeah. their goals yeah. as to what uh, they, they can get. They can get. Mm -hmm. uh, there have been claims on the left that Mr. Putin sees that a Trump, possible Trump readministration uh -huh. in January of 2025 will frame the conflict differently and that the Trump administration would take part in negotiating oh, yes, a so settlement. Definitely. He, de he said so. He has Correct. Said that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Now the only yeah the only thing standing in between is an uh, a, a, a an election, which is going to be interesting. That's correct. But, but if you look at the polls, they're not helpful to Biden. No, they are not at and, all. And I think that's right. and Mr. Putin is studying the that uh, and what it seems well, like I mean, right now yeah. are like prevailing winds, very carefully. And I think that's in his calculations. But, but Trump has always been uh, a negotiator with Putin. Always. Yes. Even, in I his, mean, even in his first administration, right. he's never wanted war with Russia. He's always wanted to do business with Russia. Right. Well, I mean, that, there are two sides. That, right. You know, I'm trying I'm to be objective. That, no, no, no. I'm not yeah. saying what's right or wrong. Please. I right. don't know what's right or wrong. Yeah. But I do know that based on his record. He has always thought we should deal with Russia. Right. And, that in, and in his mind, that will avoid Russia sliding over into an alliance with China, which right. is really not a great thing for the world. Opponents of uh, Mr. Trump yeah. or would probably say that he's not a negotiator but a puppet of Putin. So but those are the that. two that's those those, but those are the two sides. Yeah, but that's so, but that, those are the two, you know, narratives that are out there that either he's a negotiator or that he's a puppet of uh, Vladimir Putin. Yeah, but that that under underestimates <laughs> yeah. the intelligence cuz Trump is not a moron and neither is Putin. What Trump wants is always, in his entire life, he wants to do business. That and I'm not that, going to disagree with. Yeah, right, and that's what he wants with Russia. Anyway, he also wants to avoid an alliance with between Russia and China, which is not such a dopey idea. Yeah, but anyway, which seems to be happening. But let's anyway. go on because yeah. you said an interesting thing that while all this money goes to Ukraine, all this money goes to foreign wars. Yeah. What's happening in our city? Uh, yeah, our, our city is experiencing, not unlike a lot of other uh, larger cities mm -hmm. in our country, we're experiencing a uptick, a significant uptick in violent crime right. and theft. Uh, there's rampant drug use. Uh, if you don't believe me on that, just uh, you don't even have to, you can close your eyes and listen to all the sirens. Yes, every, of, right. unfortunately, uh, people you know overdosing on on uh, illegal narcotics, mm -hmm. uh, and we have not been immune to these problems that a lot of much bigger cities like San Francisco, like Portland, out on the West Coast, like Seattle, mm -hmm. and you know New York. Mm -hmm. that a lot of these cities have uh, unfortunately been facing and it's come to our little neck of the woods uh, and it can be seen it's it's very visible in a small town mm -hmm. so we are having you know these same problems and lack of funding lack of adequate law enforcement all all these issues that you know bigger cities uh, are facing all of which right increased here. it seemed during the lockdowns but I want to I want to talk specifically um, for a minute about the problems with the police that I've seen yeah because to me they're inaccessible um, I try on numerous occasions to to call the police department you can't get through to a person yeah oh, you get tick tick click here click here, there click everywhere and at the end you don't talk to a person when has that ever happened to a city that you cannot call the police? I mean, you're told in an emergency to call 911, but that's not the police. No, it's not. And it's only for emergencies. Right. So I had a tip the other day on a crime, and I was asked by the person who gave me the tip to call the police station and try to talk to 
a detective or the chief. I couldn't get through, you know, you know, as I said, click here, click here at the end, nothing. It wasn't an emergency. I wasn't going to call 911 about it. Right. There but, was no but, way to but, talk but, to the but cops. But you needed some kind of intervention. It wasn't yeah. something you were going to solve yourself. No, That's but they were, the, they were yeah. the investigators of a crime. Right, right. Okay, another, and, and my clients, both of us are lawyers. We have clients who need the cops on occasion. Of course. They confirm that. There's no way. How can you have a city where you can't call the police? Yeah. I was, this is the most, when I really became awake to this, I was told, uh, informed that one of my clients, um, a new American without any language skills okay. was being held in the police station. This was 11 o'clock on Friday night. Okay. And that uh, she was being questioned by them. Right. I wanted to call her and say, "Look, it, you don't. You have the right, right to remain silent. Sure, You're in the so United right, States right. of America. Yeah. And you have a right to talk to me. To a lawyer. Yeah. I couldn't get through." I, this was 11.30 on a Friday evening. I went down there and sat in the parking lot, circled the police station to see if there was an open door, a dispatcher, nothing, nothing. Can you believe this? So um, one of my so, colleagues joined me in the parking lot. We we're looking at, what are we going to do here? Out comes a cop, and I said, I am who I am. I'm Sandy Barrett. I'm a lawyer, and I want right. to talk to my client. Yeah. This was the quote. He said, lawyers are not permitted. Wow. Can you believe that? I, I was totally shocked. So the, the, that was Friday. On Monday, the chief was being confirmed. I went to City Hall yeah. to confirm the chief. Right. He's a man that I have at least mostly trusted. Okay. I wanted him to become the permanent chief. So I went down and I told that story. Nevertheless, I said, I am voting to confirm the police chief. Okay. And then I left. He came out and apologized to me. Okay. and said, this won't happen again, you still cannot get anyone on the phone. So How where can does, you have a... I understand the problem, and, you know, look, I had, I had my car broken into, you know, this point about five months ago, and, you know, contacted the police, and I didn't, there wasn't any real, a large, I think I lost a, a pair of, you know, nice glasses, that's about it. Mm -hmm. uh, so well, there those wasn't are a, expensive for many people. They, yeah, yeah, no, yeah. they weren't, they weren't cheap. Mm -hmm. But, uh, but that being said, I, you know, was exercised self-help and had to just deal with my own problem, mm -hmm. you know, got my card, you know, lock fixed. Mm -hmm. uh, but there's, there was, it wasn't even worth uh, reporting. Right. You know, there, I was told exactly. to report something online. So, I mean, but, but let's, I, I guess, you know, we can probably go on and on about stories that, you know, you and I have experienced as well as some of our friends and loved ones. But uh, where did this problem, when did this start? You, you know, you've been in the city here well, longer I've been, than I, I have. Well, I also was a state's attorney. I was a prosecutor right. for a while. Never, yeah. never have I seen that until recently. Right. I've been, you know, three o'clock in the morning, had to be called to the police station to get one of my DWI clients out of jail and sure. take them home drunk. Right. But always, always was able to access so the police changed? station. So what changed? What changed? I don't know exactly. Well, I mean, there I was I think a, what they will say yes. is due to, in fact, that is what the phone message says, due to staff shortages. There should be never staff shortages which would amount to police station closures? Right. That's nuts. Right. And I really but that don't. Being said, I don't. You know, it a, happened a, during COVID. Right. A yeah. yeah. Uh, a lot of people, at least, you know, and again, we're talking about Burlington, Vermont specifically. Mm -hmm. A lot of people were talking about a fateful city council vote a few years ago to cap to defund the, number the police, right? And to essentially, yeah, yeah. to ride, you know, a, a popular wave at the time of defund the police, but right. they placed a cap on the number of right. police officers. Right. And uh, others are blaming that decisive vote in the predicament of the city. Uh, do you think that you know holds water? Is that a valid yes, point? Yes, I do. And in fact, I think that heavily influenced the Democratic caucus the other day, which selected uh, Joan Shannon as the main candidate for the mayoral, the Democratic candidate for the right. mayor seat in So I understand her, her claim is, she's oh, the not only, claim, but she, she voted she, she did not against vote that. the right. defunding. That right. has strengthened her position. Right. Um, but yes, that's what happened. That's when it happened that the, the police experienced 
diminution in its numbers, I think, yeah. and this problem of not even having enough police in the city. Maybe, maybe yeah. that's the case. Even so, why isn't one of the most important positions that should have been maintained to answer the damn phone at the cop at the police station? Right. What is a per okay? What would a what would a woman do in a domestically abusive situation? Who the hell is she supposed to call? Yeah. What about a new American who doesn't know anything about 9-11? Right, right. What are they going to do? Yeah, not just new Americans, old Americans. Old that, Americans. Yeah, yeah. So What are people going to do so who do you need think, the police? So, I mean, you know, one of the things we always do on the show, you know, even when we're talking about world affairs, we, start, we try to talk about solutions, not yeah. just pointing out problems and deficiencies. Do you think... Uh, aside from that vote and, and capping the number of police officers during a precarious time in yeah. our country's history, you know, that with the influx of, you know, new types of drugs that yes. came from the West Co Coast that have had, uh, you know, an adverse impact on our population. Do you think other things could have been done differently? Uh, private, you know, I've heard everything in this town from hiring private security until the numbers of police could be beefed up. I've even heard of uh, people talk about having citizen militias because of the gun okay, laws that we right. have in the this state. Is, this is real, a real problem, too. Yeah. Okay, so I go often to talk with the mayor on Wednesdays at the Bagel Bakery. He's, okay. He now doesn't do them anymore because he's going to be up for election anyway. Or he's leaving. But, okay, right. so, yeah. And there's always a huge amount of people there because that, they get to talk to the mayor, which is a very good thing it is, that Moreau right. did. So yeah. I go often. Yeah. But I listen more than I do anything. The dangerous thing is that Moreau sits there. He doesn't have control over this situation. Obviously, no mayor does, because it's a national situation. The it rise is. of drugs, the rise of abusive uh, people in the streets, because they're all, many of them are drug abusers, yeah. the rise of crime. He doesn't have control fully over that. I don't blame him, honestly. Well, I'm not saying that but the wait mayor... Wait a minute, wait a minute. It, it, but the thing that bothers me the most is what the citizens are then asking about. They are so disturbed by this, as you might guess, sure. that they are asking, basically, for a police state. Right. They would like the Constitution to be broken and put people in jail. I, I, well, I, I think I, these, you know... Uh, extreme measures yeah. are coming from a population that that's desperate. But yeah, largely this was a largely crime-free town. I know violent crime. Yes, you know there You're were, right. you, know, you, you could get your bicycle stolen, but there wasn't. But you know, not much. No, but not much more no. than that. And that has changed into a nightmare. A large city type. Right, you know, issue. right. But anyhow, we only have a little bit of time left. But it is the most serious issue facing this city, and I do not see what's going to make it better, because what the citizens are asking for, essentially, is that the Constitution, in some ways, be merely scrapped. I mean, they want long sentences for what? For people yelling in City Hall Park? They would love it. Yeah. But it's not constitutional. Yeah. Well, I think people's, you know, people are concerned about their safety. More. And the, and okay. The safety, I, mean, I want to say something. And the safety, you know, look, if people are trying to raise children, yes, you know, I don't blame anybody. Environment. I do yeah. not blame anybody. Yeah. I'm just issuing some caution here. Right. Ben Franklin said, "You, you can't have security and liberty." Yeah. You lose both. Right. If you demand total security, what you're going to do is destroy liberty. Right. The, on the flip side, yeah. I mean, since you're <laughs> quoting great people, uh, I'll quote, uh, you know, the, the German writer and philosopher Goethe, yeah. Johann Wolfgang von Goethe, and he said, you know, if I had to make a choice, and I'm paraphrasing, between uh, uh, justice and order, I'll select order. Yeah, but he was ge German. <laughs> okay, maybe we can end on that. Yes, note. let's do that. <laughs> okay. okay, thank you. See you in a couple, in a month. Sure.